Hey, I'm Zero Waste Daniel, and for Earth Day this year, I want to show you guys a craft I created that uses the smallest scraps of fabric and thread scraps. I've gotten a lot of questions about this over the years. What are you doing with this stuff? And to make the Zero Waste Daniel collection, I use a machine called an overlock machine that does some cutting and sewing and binding as it stitches. And basically what happens is that this shredded kind of material comes off the edge of the machine as it cuts and creates that clean line. So what I want to do today is create something that takes this material, which we finally have enough of to do something with. So let's get started. For this craft, you're going to need a pair of scissors, some tweezers, a pair of snips, straight pins. We're also going to use an iron. To get started, we're going to take some scrap material. I like long stringy scraps and pieces of thread mixed in there so that we can easily get the pieces to form into a string. So the first thing we're going to do is take them and kind of roll them between our hands and form this sort of string-like substance. Think about it almost like creating yarn. You're going to take your starter and get it underneath the presser foot and then start zigzagging in any color across the entire thing. So you want it to go from side to side and then as you sew, start twisting that fabric. So twisting as it goes through the presser foot and just pull it right on through. It's okay if it gets a little chunky, but if you have a little flyaway, do your best to get it back under the presser foot. You can use your tweezers or a pin, and we're just gonna have the stitch go all the way across. That's gonna make an easier kind of yarn for us to use. So right here, you're gonna see one of my threads got looped around my presser foot, and that's why I keep my snips by me. So I can just get right in there and snip it and keep going. After you've created about one yard or three feet of this material, you're going to cut that off and you're gonna run it through the zigzag machine, twisting as you go, just one more time, twisting as you go. At home, if you're using wovens or a slightly different material makeup, just make sure you're adjusting your needle and your thread tension to accommodate whatever kind of fabric you're using, but this is a really freestyle kind of project, so don't get too stressed out about what the actual settings of your machine should be. It's just gonna take a little bit of experimentation to get the right flow for the scraps and fabric you're using. And I always recommend if it's not working, just switch out the thread, try a different gauge needle and reapproach. Then once you have your yard of your scrap yarn made, you're gonna start coiling it in your hands just like this. And once you have your coil made, you're gonna get it stuck together with a straight pin. This is the beginning of the coil and it goes around like this, but this is the beginning of the space between the coils. So we're gonna start here. We're gonna start zigzagging right on that space because that's really the space where we need coverage. And then you're gonna take that pin and put it underneath the presser foot, start slowly turning it. You can use the pin, you can use your tweezers or a combination. Just get the right circular shape going and then just follow that circular shape around make a coil and use your zigzag to hold it together and just keep going until you've achieved your desired size. And then you're going to start slowly turning. You can use the pin here, you can use your tweezers again. Just follow that circular shape. Just like that, you're doing great. And I'm finished with these. They're about four inches across. They're not quite a perfect circle, but they're a nice circular shape. I'm gonna zigzag around the edge one more time, and then I'm gonna just steam them and press them flat. And I like to leave them under my pattern weights to cure for a while after I've steamed them, but you could put them under some books or something heavy to cure for a while. And remember, in terms of sustainability, it's always most efficient if you unplug your appliances when you're not using them. Even when they're turned off, they can be ghosting electricity out of the walls. So just a pro tip. So there you go, a great set of coasters. They're great as gifts. You can use them at home or, you know, this is just a jumping off point for you to look at your scraps as something beautiful and create anything out of this material. Don't forget to look at your scraps as an opportunity to create something beautiful.